Hey everybody, how's it going? I just wanted to let you know that uh, the Lord has given me an, another moving to share some more scripture that He's laid on my heart. One of the greatest Bible verses to me in the world uh, is John 3.16. Um, John 3.16 is if you ask me, it completely summarizes the entire Bible story from Genesis to Revelation. Not only does it do that, but also what's really wild about John 3.16, and it's really strange, but I learned the verse John 3 16 even in Sunday school when I was a kid and for some reason I don't know why but we always want to act like John 3 16 is a children's verse it's like something you learn in children's school or children's church Sunday school but it's not something that we you know it's not an adult verse you know that's that's for kids you know but it's not it it is one of the most powerful, strongest, solid verses in the entire Bible. So let's get started. I just wanted to say that a little bit. I don't know why we want to act like that it's meant for children. Uh, but it's not. It's meant for all of us at all times. It is such a beautiful, awesome verse. And it just speaks volumes and volumes and volumes of... God's love to us. All right, I'm reading from the New King James Version, but it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I've got some notes here. I'm pretty much just going to read the notes and follow through. I'm going to add some content to it as I go. Uh, I hope this will be a blessing to someone. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Please speak to whoever this was meant for. You laid this on my heart. That means it's meant for somebody out here. So, Lord God, I pray and ask that whoever needs to hear this, that you will work through the power of the Holy Spirit to get it to them. It's in Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Okay. I'm going to kind of take it word for word, more or less. And it starts out for, for God. The word for just means because, which, you know, we don't really think too much about that word, but because God so loved the world. So the word for, you trans, translate to because. Because God, because God theos, divine. That's God the Father. For God so loved the world. Now, here's one of the most awesome words in this verse is the word so. Listen. It is, it's amazing because look, you take the word so, God could have said uh, God could have just, just as easily said uh, for God loved the world. But instead he put emphasis on the fact that he loves us. He didn't just say God loves the world. He says God so love the world so he put emphasis on the word so it's not just that he loves us it's just that he absolutely loves us with all his being he loves us he's our heavenly father he loved us enough that he sent his own son to die for us on the cross oh it's just awesome listen let me tell you a story that happened to me years ago uh i worked third shift i was real tired hadn't had no sleep my mom needed to go somewhere right so uh, I don't even remember where we were going or anything. I just remember this happening. and, and But uh, she was in the passenger seat of the car. And I'm driving these back back roads, you know. And uh, my mom said, said, there's a curve up ahead. Now, she didn't say there's a curve. She said, there's a curve up ahead, Joey. Well, I didn't pick up on what she said. Well, we come up on a 90-degree hairpin curve. Not a curve, but a curve, okay? Listen, I like to went out in a field because I didn't pick up on her curve. 
You see, there's emphasis. God emphasizes. Even we today, we even emphasize. But man, my mom, she like to flog my head. And she says, I, 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 said, I said, Mama, why didn't you tell me that was a sharp curve? She said, I did. She said, I said curve. So, God so loved the world. So he put that emphasis there on the word so. That he so loved us. Not that he just loved us, but that he so loved us. Now the word love there is agape. And it means unconditional love. No strings attached. That's it. God so loved the world. Loved. He loves us unconditionally, just as we are. He doesn't expect us to be good. He doesn't expect us to be bad. He doesn't expect anything at all of us except for the simple fact of being who we are. And he loves us for that very reason. And he accepts us exactly as we are. Now the word, the words there, the world. For God so loved the world. All right, now that is every man, woman, child ever born, regardless of race, economic standing, or moral fiber. I don't care if you're a... Uh, uh, I don't care if you if you're uh, rich poor, uh, God loves you, and and every person in this world Jesus came to die for, and rose from the dead, and, and He offers each and every one of us the opportunity, if we will accept His forgiveness and ask Him to come into our hearts and to save us, He will. Then it says that He gave. Now this was this was an interesting word study. I had to spend some time on this. But he says that he gave. This literally means delivered up. Uh, and I immediately thought of the story of Abraham offering up Isaac to God for a sacrifice. I'm not going to take the time to read the verses, but you can go to Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. And please read that story. And when you read this verse, then go over and read that story. And you'll see God the Father literally delivered Jesus to this world and put him on this planet, born to die on the cross of Calvary to shed his precious blood so that we could be saved. You see, he was delivered up. He gave his son. Uh, he, he literally delivered him, born of a virgin, raised and started his ministry and died was buried was raised from the dead he returned to glory all in order to give us eternal life the opportunity to be saved and have our sins forgiven be saved so that we can have a spend eternity with him the only difference here is that God the Father did not stop the sacrifice but allowed his son to be uh, be the Lamb of God to shed His blood so that we could be saved. Now, Isaac, he was saved from Abraham's knife plunging into his heart as a sacrifice because God said, Abraham, I see that you're being faithful to me. But Jesus was faithful to God and he, even though he cried out and said, Father, not my will but thine be done. If there's any way this cup can pass from me, let it. He didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to go through the beatings. He didn't want to go through the through through all that torture and pain. But he did. He willfully gave himself to do exactly what the, the Heavenly Father wanted him to do so that he could redeem us and save us. That's how much he loved us, folks. Now, Jesus is real. Now, I'm telling you. He's only begotten. This means that uh, this means one of a kind, the only member of a kin, one in the same blood. So when God says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son," that's the only one He had. That was it. It was it that Jesus was the only Son. Now, how many of us? We have multiple children. Okay? How many of us wouldn't even be willing to lay down the life of one of our child, children in order to save somebody else? I wouldn't. I wouldn't sacrifice one of my three kids in order to save some stranger, 
some hobo, some drunk, some uh, drug addict, some murderer, some rapist. I wouldn't even be willing to lay my my child's life down in order to, to save the most best person in the world. But yet God sent his only begotten son, the only one he had. And the word son there means child. His only begotten son, that. Now that word that means in order that, denoting the purpose or the result. Okay, so what he's saying there is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that in order whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The word whosoever, all, any, every, the whole, that it just all encompassing. And then he says he believes, whosoever believes. And that means to have faith in, to entrust one's spiritual well-being to Christ. We have to believe in Christ. We have to and ask him to come into our hearts and forgive us of our sins. And he will. Uh, the word in, into him, the point reached or entered, which is Christ. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Only through Jesus is there salvation. Not Buddha, not Allah, nobody. Whoever else you want to stick in there. Only Jesus, the only way to heaven. He's the only door. Now, the word him refers to Christ. Should not. Now, that word should not is interesting. Because he said, uh, whosoever believes in him should not. That means God forbid. God forbid. He will not allow it to happen. He will not allow us to perish and go to hell if we believe in his son Jesus Christ and the word perish that means to destroy fully the second death Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death Revelation 21 8 but the cowardly unbelieving abominable murderers sexual immoral sorcerers idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death so, that's what perish there means. Dying and going to hell means eternally separated from God. And then it says, but have. That is to hold, to have the ability to have. But have everlasting life. That means that we're going to hold it. We have the ability to have it. All we have to do is believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Everlasting, eternal, forever. Life literally means life. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it'll be a blessing. If anyone needs to know how to uh, accept Christ their Savior, all you got to do is believe that He is, that He came, He died, He rose from the dead. And if you'll go to Him and ask Him to forgive you of your sins, He will forgive you. And he will come into your heart. He will seal you into the day of redemption. Now listen, folks. I love you. Jesus loves you. God the Father loves you. You always remember that. God bless you.